hello everyone and welcome uh back or welcome to my channel the truth about god um a little backstory about me my name is erica and i started this channel almost a year ago and i talk about the things that god has done in my life and the truths that he's revealed to me about himself throughout that process uh, so for everybody who's been watching, welcome back. For anybody who's new, welcome. All right. Um, today I want to talk to y'all about judging and being judged and what it looks like and what it feels like. And in our current climate, the climate in our country right now, and now it's spreading, you know, all over the world, the protests and the rioting. It's poignant, and I'm so grateful that God gave this word to me right now, <clears throat> right in this moment, right where we are today. And I hope that it will give you some insight and help you to reflect about your own heart. And if you have any sin in your heart, and if you have any racism, honestly, or discrimination in your heart, not just for white people, but black and Asian and Indian and all of us who are different, you know, hopefully this will help you to bring that to God. And let him help you through it and cleanse your heart and change your mind. Because he will help you with that. This is nothing that you have to do on your own. And I'm always saying that you do not have to figure this life out by yourself. You do not have to figure out these things on your own. All right. So judging. Let me give you the definition of judgment. And it is the ability to make considered decisions or to come to sensible conclusions or an opinion or conclusion or a decision of a court or judge or to a misfortune or calamity viewed as a divine punishment all right that's you know just the i guess the common definition of the word judgment and i looked it up what does the bible um define it as and so i got the hebrew definition of judgment the word judge krenos means to separate to make a distinction between to exercise judgment upon to estimate to assume a sensor a sensorial power over to call to account to judge judiciously to bring to trial to be brought to account to administer government over all right so I've given you a lot of definitions right now. Um, and when you have a moment, go look it up yourself. You know, search your heart. You have to be willing to educate yourself about yourself. Just as willing as you are to educate yourself about what you like, what you don't like, you know. Um, and hopefully you're educating yourself about the Word of God as well. But you have to search yourself a little bit too, all right? So, like I said... Judge not, lest ye be judged, all right? We all know that we're different. We all know that we're different. We've been hearing about this. Even if you never heard it before, you know you're different than other people. You can just look outwardly. You are different than other people. We're all different, all right? All different shapes, sizes, um, backgrounds. We know this, right? And we know that all people are different. We tend not to love different. Sometimes we tend not to like different and different can be a challenge and different can be a struggle to accept. All right. Um, before I go any further, let me give you the first scripture reference. It is Matthew chapter seven, verses one through six. Judge not that you be not judged for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. All right. Jesus said a mouthful when he said that. And all of us in certain times and certain situations in our life feel like we're entitled 
to judge people. We're entitled to feel a certain way about them. And God is saying to us flat out, you're not, one. Two, with the same judgment, the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So we have to kind of take account of ourselves, all right? How hard are you on other people? How hard are you on other people, all right? Because however hard you are on other people, that's what's going to be used on you, all right? And that's something to really consider and think about just in your day-to-day -day life, especially with what's going on with George Floyd and how it's roused us, you know, and called us out to protest and come against that type of behavior, those types of thinkings, right? Um, I heard someone say on NPR one time that we tend to make God hate the people we hate and make God not like the people that we don't like. And while that's certainly not true, you know, the God love, certainly is true that God loves everyone, but um, acceptance is a journey. Acceptance is a journey. So if you're not there today, and if you are been kind of wrestling with some stuff that's been unearthed, about yourself, about your thinking, about your heart, about your mind, that's okay as long as you are on the journey. And if you're not, it's one that you should start ASAP, especially for people of faith, especially for people of faith. I recognize that everyone who stumbles upon this channel or God leads you to this channel, you may not believe uh, in Jesus quite yet. You may be on the fence. You may be searching. You may be... Um, just kind of filling it out, trying to see where you land, you know. But for us who are of faith, for us that believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, we got to do better. And we don't have any time to wait on that. And that needs to be something that is paramount. If your heart is sick, you're going to have to see God diligently and ask him to heal the places inside of you that are deceived confused and broken and that is something that we need to be seeking God after ASAP especially if this turn of events have revealed some prejudices in yourself that maybe you didn't know that you had you know and that can be true for anybody right um God truly loves everyone God truly loves everyone God loves everyone and if you have not come to terms with that now's the time God loves everyone, all right? If you hate white people, you hate white people, God love them, all right? Um, you hate black people, guess what? God love us too, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, these are facts. Um, you don't see how God can use a rapper, a stripper, a politician. Guess what? He can. Whether you don't understand how he can or how he can do it, or why he would do it even, he can. God has no limits. And his heart has no barriers to loving wherever our current occupation is or our the color of our skin. There's no barrier to him loving us and receiving us, okay? Um, people who haven't been to church from birth, all right? All of us who feel like there's a certain decorum that you have to go to, a certain initiation, you know, in order to be accepted into the kingdom of God. That's not true. If you've never stepped foot in the church, God loves you as well. Um, you don't know all the rules. God can use you too, right? So let me give you the next scripture. It is Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You, therefore, must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. All right, for us of faith, for us who have believed and been baptized into faith, this is what we're called to do. 
all right we are not only called to love people who look like us act like us think like us talk like us that is easy for anybody to do we can all do that quite easily all right it's easy to love people that you want to love already it is much more difficult to love people who you don't understand who you don't agree with who you don't feel as though you can relate to who don't represent your current ideals and values that is much more difficult and yet we're called to it anyway and yet God has told us what is good all right and if you are struggling with this and a lot of us have struggled with this during different times in our lives and you may be struggling with it today you may be looking at your TV and reading your Google feed and looking at how people are reacting and you just don't have anything for it and you don't understand why they're behaving the way that they are and you don't understand why they're as angry as they are and maybe even a part of you feels as though this could have been avoided and maybe he even brought it on himself a little bit you know or maybe you've looked at some of the other incidences where um, men of color have been killed by law enforcement and you feel as though oh, okay well their background their criminal history kind of excuses that behavior it doesn't it doesn't and if you're struggling with that today and if you're feeling convicted even as i'm saying this to you start talking to god about that because he's not ashamed of what he already sees in your heart he just wants you to bring it to him so he can help you with it that's it and that's all so he can love you so you can love other people better that's what we're called to do all right yeah, the same degree of harshness that we have towards other people. And if you're human, you've experienced it in some way, shape, or form. Um, is the measuring stick God will use toward us. That's just it. However you feel about other people and how unforgiving or unwilling you are to understand or unwilling to have compassion on, that's how he'll give it back to us. That's how he'll give it right back to you, all right? We really have to pray about this. And I know I'm saying that over and over again, but it's so important, so important, especially now that there's a revival and a change occurring all over the world. Black people aren't just angry. White people are angry. Asian people are angry. Indian people are angry. There's a diversity in recognition of the suffering which is only from heaven. That's only from God. And if you're kind of standing off a little bit and you feel a little uncomfortable with it and you don't know what you should be doing or how you should feel, God will lead you and direct you in that. You know, you can ask for help in that. You can be candid. That's the word. Thank you, Jesus. You can be candid with him about your feelings and your emotions and um, maybe even the prejudices that you grew up with. You know, and this is not just only for white people. Black people grow up with prejudices as well. Um, Indian people as well, Asian people as well, all of us grow up, Mexican people as well, all of us grow up with some level of um, thoughts and attitudes towards people of other races and it's up to us to be proactive in calling that out in ourselves and asking God to help us to move forward in it, right? Be careful, we have to guard our hearts, I'm sorry, I wanted to say something else, but we truly have to guard our hearts, um, it's true that you won't like uh, everyone you encounter, but judging them is something totally different. And we have to pray and also, and also ask God to help us, I'm sorry, to avoid it. Um, before I go any further, let me give you the next scripture reference. It is Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. This is the golden rule. You grow up hearing this from kindergarten almost. People are saying, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Over and over again, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I think it's gotten lost in translation in our society and how we behave and how we treat other people. And if you would not like for someone to put their knee on your son's neck no matter what ethnicity you are then it would be wise for you not to do that to someone else right 
how you treat people, how we treat people, you know, is how we're going to be measured as a society, how we treat people, right? Not what we say about them, but how we treat them, all right? <sighs> if there is a certain group of people or just anything that you find yourself judging, confess that sin to God, confess it to God. And ask him to help you. He knows your viewpoints already. He sees what's going on in your heart already. All right? And he's not ashamed of you. We are limited in our perceptions of people. And God can see the full story. And God can see the whole story. All right? Trust him to help you. Trust him to help you. All right? If this message um, encouraged you or blessed you or even kind of convicted you even you know that's not a bad thing uh i hope that it convicted you and i hope that it makes you be introspective about what's going on in your own heart and ways that you can heal and ways that you can be helped and ways that we can grow and change together all right if this video done any of those things for you please uh like subscribe and comment below and i'll see you guys next time bye